What's up, Cinemaniacs? I am back with my buddy, Chad Davis, over here, who works all of the independent stuff over on the Cinebros page. And you can find us both at facebook.com slash the Cinebros. And what we are doing here is, as always, is discussing, debating everything under the sun when it comes to movies, everything re movie related. The first thing that we're gonna do today is we are going to talk about the movies that you voted on. We gave you six last week, and the one that was victorious was the one that I finally won one. Finally won finally one. Finally won one of these movie Both battles, times. and I got it. Monty, Monty Python and the Holy Grail is the victor, and I think it was like at somewhere around 50% or so, like 47% yeah, of the vote. Big surprise to me. We didn't get a, as many votes as yeah. we did the last time, but still, a victory is a victory. A victory book, is a victory. I'm okay. We gotta get, we gotta get like, uh, we gotta get a trophy or something. Yeah, maybe. we need a belt, a trophy, something better than like this. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't even, I haven't even got to hold that thing yet. I mean, you just <laughs> got that this week, didn't you? No, it's hey. I almost killed you with it on the last show. I know. <laughs> um, so anyway, we're going to talk about Monty Python and the Holy Grail. We just watched it about an hour ago. Uh, what was your first experience like with one of the most quotable movies of all time? I see the quotability in it. Um, I didn't find the humor in it, though. I mean, I don't know if you had to be a fan of like the, the whole Monty Python series. or, But I just I, I wasn't feeling it. There was some funny parts in it that I did laugh out loud in. But. I did tell you, though. I did tell you that you needed to... This is one of those movies that I think it gets better with time. Like, the more times you watch it, yeah. the more you know... Because, I mean, there's a lot of things that go quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's real um, quick. Especially yeah. in the credits and everything yep. at the beginning when you can stop and read them all and yeah. everything. It's funny. But, so, your, your experience of the first time... What, not, wasn't not, that great? I mean, my brother was here, yeah, and all we were doing, yeah, I kept on. He was like sitting, yeah, you guys on the going side in the book, we're look bookshelf at, the at each other, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quot quoting before the movie even, uh, you know, the movie even did it. You yellow bastard, get back here! <laughs> but Bite I did, your I, legs off. I did find some funny parts in it. I mean, I could see how people would assume it to be one of the funniest movies out there. I mean, it has got to be in the all-time classic movie, like as far as comedies go. It has got to be one of the top ten best comedies yeah. of all time. I mean, it just stretch. It, it, you have such a large generation gap. Like, there's so many generations that love this movie. Yeah, yeah. And it it's almost timeless. Like, just the humor in it is just. There's a lot of poop humor, like yeah. kind of, and it's real. Uh, it's and, real goofy. It it's, is. It's, it's, it's real silly. Yeah. It's, it. I mean, if you have any idea of Monty Python at all, like I, my personal, fa I, there was a point in time where I was back and forth with the meaning in life as my favorite Monty Python movie. Yeah. And that is, um, it's a little more like, I, I want to say like political kind of humor and like religious humor. This one is just straight up like goofy comedy oh, and yeah. it does go into a little bit of the politics and yeah. stuff, and, yeah. but it's just so funny and so quotable. I mean, like the, when they're in the tower, one of my brother's favorite scenes is when they're in the tower for the Sir, Sir Lancelot. Yeah, and the guy's charging the castle. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that like, was one of the funny parts that I thought. Yeah, <laughs> like over and over. And, and they over didn't again. react to him at all. Like. And they're just like sitting there, the guy's still eating his orange or whatever <laughs> yeah. the heck he's eating. It's just over and over again. And like finally comes up and kills one of the guards. The other guy's like, hey. <laughs> so ridiculous goes in and murders like the whole yeah. castle pretty much <laughs> and like then he gets up there to finally save the the mistress and yeah. uh or the whatever the, the made him in distress yeah and it's a guy yeah it's a guy and he's yeah. like oh i'm sorry sir i thought he's like yeah you saved <laughs> yeah. me you saved me and then you know of course the banter back and forth with the father and the son yeah it's just so much i mean that you watch i love this movie so much i mean there is as far as the quotability goes, I mean, I, I'm going to say this. I have to say this. I'm going to interrupt you. Whenever I don't agree with you in the show, I'm going to be throwing some knees at you. <laughs> knee, knee. I'm going to be doing it. I'm, I'm going to have to watch it again and maybe watch it by myself so I can concentrate a little bit more. Maybe when I'm more, a little bit more awake. I did doze off like one one or two times. I, I saw you doze but off. It was like, I, was, I, I dozed was, off for like maybe like 15, I, 20 seconds because I caught myself like... <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I gotta stay up for this thing, and uh, I just I, <laughs> Next it didn't time watch it in the daylight. <laughs> right, right from the right from the beginning, uh, it just it wasn't hitting me. So maybe maybe I lost interest real early. But now that I've seen the movie, I'm probably gonna you know go what back you're and watch into, it. At least. I know what I'm getting into. I didn't know what I was getting into at all. I mean, I didn't know the comedy, like how the comedy was gonna be, and I, it was really goofy. And I'm I'm surprised I didn't like it because I do like that goofy slapstick kind of. 
comedy, but you, yeah. you like you said, it's real fast, it's and really fast. you really got to pay attention to the catch all the jokes that are in it. I love My it. favorite scene was probably right at the beginning, which surprised me too that I didn't like it more, but. Um, when they were first entered the castle, well, they were at, first at the castle, and they were talking about uh, sparrows. Oh, the, well, back, oh, the, back the, the swallows. Yeah, the, the swallows. swallows. Yeah, there you go. And uh, the they European just kept, swallow yeah, and just, the African swallow. Afri- just going back and forth, and then they used it later on in the yes. movie and, uh, yes. as a fact that he needed to, you know, cross the bridge or whatever, yeah. which is I, th- I thought was pretty neat too. It's an extremely clever movie. I, I mean, I, I have a feeling the more you watch it, yeah, I may do, yeah, yeah, you'll like, you'll, you'll enjoy it Definitely. more as you watch it, yeah. and it'll come to a point where, uh, you know, I gotta start doing have like a like a a yearly kind of gathering of the awesome movies like this. Like, yeah, just that you can like know all the lines, you can yep. quote everything out. Movies like that are so much better. The more people that you see yeah. them with too. Yeah. Like, Oh, I just, we got to do something like that. But anyway, so, so you didn't really care for it too much. I, it's not that I didn't care for it. But I, 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 I mean, if I had to give it a rating, yeah. it would be right now. It would be six and a half. See, for me, it's a nine and a half. Yeah. It's a nine and a half out of 10 because it's not perfect, mm-hmm. but it's pretty darn close to perfect. Yeah. For me, I mean, as far as it hits comedy on all levels, mm-hmm. the quotability factor, amazing. But there are a couple of parts that are a little slow. Mm-hmm. Um, they kind of nip it in the bud a little bit. You know, every once in a while, they're like, get to the question. They have all their people come on, like, get to the point. Yeah. You know, whatever. Or, you know. Yeah, they, they made fun uh, of themselves. And, yeah. and they do that a lot. But there are some times when they're, especially when they're talking about the politics and stuff like that, I can see people like kind of doze off because it's not as relevant now, as it is anymore is, it, is, is, is this like a british yeah this is a british thing right yeah. like yeah yeah they were very very famous they had monty python the flying circus which yeah. is a television show i think on the bbc for years mm-hmm. and then it went off air and they had made a couple of movies they made uh life of brian um the meaning of life and a monty python the holy grail yeah they made those and those are the kind of the ones that that most people's second favorite is life of brian mm-hmm. not mine i i actually really enjoy the meaning of life but um yeah, this one, if I have to give it a rating, it's a nine and a half. And I half. mean, it's so close to a 10. And, you know, if I was watching this in a room with people that I know love this movie, I'd probably would have said 11 out of 10. Yeah. Because, but I, I, you know, I can just, watching you watch the movie, I can see how it could be not necessarily for everybody, especially on the first time. Yeah. First I, bet time. I did. I saw you, you and your brother, like, communicating <laughs> back and forth with each other. Like, it, it was funny. Yeah, it was funnier. Yeah, I thought it was funnier yeah, watching you guys yeah. communicate back and forth through a bookshelf. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> I love that now as far as like British stuff, is this your, like your favorite like British like series? Like, um, I mean, straight British stuff. I mean, I know there's a lot of British stuff that com- Ma- Monty is converted Python to. Is 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 awesome? Is like they're they're top tier in yeah. my book. When it comes to anything, they are top tier. Like yeah. when it comes to comedy, like that is like my go to kind of. You know, as, if I'm ever gonna like. I don't know. I mean, as far as Monty Python, I mean, just them in general, I find them hilarious together as a group. Yep. Um, and I can't, I wouldn't even be able to think of another. See, I, I mean, I got, um, I, w- I was always a Bean fan. Mm. And um, I grew and I didn't grow up on Bean. Obviously, it was way before my time. I, a little bit before my time, probably. Right. But I did re- watch all the reruns of them. Loved the movies. I mean, but I know it's not for everybody. And British comedy no, is not it's for it's everybody. good. I just, it's not. For me, I mean, yeah. it's, not, it's not as good to me. Mr. Like, Bean, I love Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean's funny. Yeah, it's, it's just not. It, it, I mean, I'm, I would probably give the Bean movies like six to seven. You know, somewhere yeah, the, the, movie, like, the, the, the movies weren't yeah, as good yeah. as the the actual the, the TV show. I mean, the show. Yeah, but um, the, that the one just that one time that he had the turkey stuck in his head, <laughs> it's like it was like. Can so you gold. should watch Friends then, damn it, because Joey <laughs> well, sticks turkey on his head. Yeah, they they copied him. <laughs> they copied Mr. Bean. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So yeah. So if you were gonna rate it, you'd give it a six and a half. Six and a half. Well, but it probably would go up as I watched it more. We'll like, have to watch it again. Yeah, I will watch. Watch it, again. it a couple times. Get back together. We'll get quoted. I definitely more. wasn't like gonna say like I hated it. Like. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah. I could watch. I we could watch that again later tonight. I would love it again. Yeah. But so we're gonna go on to our next the next set of movies that we're going to give each other. Next trio, um, yeah. So I am going to see if I can go back to back. I went first last time as the victor. I will let the challenger go first. 
It didn't so, work. This didn't uh, work out too well for me last week. Well, uh, I, you know, I, last I, time. I, I, yeah, you're gonna go first. You know, so you know me. I like. It. I've been doing this little thing where I, you know, I'm kinda, going. I'm going back to back. I'm telling you. Right I go. I, I, I break mine down to the like little categories and whatever. I go mm-hmm. on a topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, this topic. This this show is gonna be uh, movies in the 1980s with Corey Feldman in it. <laughs> and uh, I am going. I mean, back to back to back years here. I mean, he had a run of. Three pretty solid movies uh, from. He was a va- very famous Corey from '84 to '86. So uh, the first movie I'm going to start right off for the earliest one. It was '84. It was The Gremlins. Gremlin number one, huh? Gremlins. Yep. Wow, yep. yeah. Gremlins. Gremlins, good Christmas movie. Uh-huh. That yeah, Gremlins is a good movie. That's a good one. All right, so I I am going to challenge you, yeah. and this is a movie that you have seen recently mm-hmm. because uh, I well I, not you haven't seen it recently, but you reminded me of it okay. recently in one of our shows i'm gonna lead off with space balls nice nice so i am leading off with space balls. i haven't seen that probably in about 10 years i just i want to see it again and that is the one right there that's gonna bring it home for me <laughs> that is gonna bring it home go ahead i just watched that recently actually oh did you really? yeah just yeah. a couple weeks ago oh. um Excellent. follow that one up with 1985 goonies the Goonies. Yeah. Well, that's going to give some trouble. That's going to be trouble right I there. I mean, that one's going to be tough. Who one. doesn't love the Goonies? I mean, um, come on. Everybody loves the Goonies. Yeah. I, I'm i not the biggest Goonie fan, yeah. but I can respect Very the, watchable, I can man. respect the culture. It's, I mean, the, the, the it's cult, definitely yeah, a movie you want to watch with people. Yeah. You can't, I wouldn't be able to sit at home and watch the Goonies by myself Chunk. because there wouldn't be anybody near me. <laughs> like, I get up and do the truffle shuffle. <laughs> I, I do it with them. I mean,. <laughs> And if this wins, I will do it on camera. How about that? And if this wins, I will do it on camera. How about that? If you, oh, <laughs> come on! Don't I will that. throw that oh, out there. Damn it! I will throw that out there. Damn it! <laughs> no, I'm definitely gonna lose. All right. So your second one is, you know, him doing the truffle shuffle. We won't even put the movie in there. It's just say he's gonna do the truffle shuffle. My next one that I'm going to put out there is going to also be playing off some like older cinema and some goofy humor. And we're going to go with the three amigos. Nice. Steve Martin. Yes. Steve Martin, Chevy Chase. Yep. And um, 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 what's it? Uh, what's, what's the name? What's the guy's name? Uh, Martin Short. Martin, Martin Short. Short. Yes. There you go. Yes. All right. All right. I'm going to I'm going to follow that with up with 1986. Uh, arguably, maybe his best movie. Stand by me. In classic, uh, that the scene in that movie, the pie eating scene, mm-hmm. it almost got me to dislike pie. Yep. <laughs> I I get nauseous every time I watch that scene. Every <sighs> single time I watch that scene, any like it kind of ruined me for like throw up humor in any movie. Yeah, yeah. Every time I see that, immediately flash back to that that scene in that movie, and I get like my stomach gets in knots. It's like yeah. oh yeah, it was gets, yeah. Oh, so gross, but. Good movie, just I don't like that scene. Maybe I'll just close my or I'll have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> I'll pause it. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, thanks. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. All right. So the the last movie that I have on my little uh, screen here is I'm going to pick as my third movie, a movie that I love so much, and I think it's more, um, kind of an underrated movie as far as Vince Vaughn goes. And I know you love Vince Vaughn. I love Vince Vaughn. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Dodge a ball, dodge ball, ball baby. baby. Yes. What's the whole title though? Come on. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be a whole title. Oh, what is it? It's like the underdog story yeah. or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> dodge ball. Yeah. So that's my third movie. I love that. But that is like on top of my list of quotes. Like that's quotable a great movie. movie. I, I would mean, love, I would love to watch that. Ben movie Stiller. Hey, you just can't describe <laughs> him in that movie. Like he, he's, he's fantastic. He's fantastic I, in that I movie. That. You I can't wait to see that. It's not a better word than what you just said though. By the way, fantastic. He is fantastic in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. I, I can't. Uh, yeah. So we have quite the lineup. Yeah, the, uh, like last time. I mean, this last one, time this was chock full. This one. I think the two favorites are going to be Spaceballs and, and the uh, Truffle and Shuffle. And the Truffle Shuffle. <laughs> yeah, the Goonies. Oh, my Lord. That one's going to be a tough one to beat. That's going to be really tough to beat. All right. So we're going to move up next to um, a little segment that we do where we, do new, we talk about new trailers or news or speculation. Just basically shoot the shit about anything that's kind of new and relevant. And the first question that we have up is... There's going to be a live action movie of Dumbo being made. Um, the recent, uh, recently, the studio has found its director, and that person is Tim Burton. What do you think about the news of Tim Burton signing on to direct? Love it. You love it? Love it. Um, 
I'm probably one of the few people out there that actually do like his remakes of older movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved Alice in Wonderland. Um, and I, w- I mean, I'm not going to say I love Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, mm-hmm. but I thought it was very watchable. Um, it was cool how he kind of put his spin on it, but I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of him. And he, I mean, he's the list of movies that he's done. So you're still I a fan love. even after watching Batman. And, uh, I know you didn't really care for the movie as a whole, but you like Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. You still, did you like you still liked his vision of it? His kinda. vision wasn't that bad, and I, you know what, the the biggest thing about Batman for me was, I, you know, I kind of explained it. I didn't, I didn't like Michael Keaton in it. I mean, hmm. I just, um, and I didn't like Batman himself. I mean, that's just going back to the last episode. I explained all that. Yeah. I mean, I just thought he was kind of dull, but I know. Tim I just, Burton, yeah. man, he. I mean, he's on top. See, like, for, top of my list for directors. For me, Tim Burton is hit or miss, and. He, he misses that, like, more. Misses. He misses more for me than he hits. Oh, for, okay, maybe so, for you. Yeah, and and that's that's just for me. He's a hit or miss director. And granted, if you want, I mean, Dumbo is kind of a twisted oh, man. cartoon. It's, it's a very a, a very mushroomy. Ani- yeah, it's very <laughs> animated, and you have to be on something kind of deal. And that movie, to me, if you're gonna have someone direct it, it should be Tim Burton. Yeah. Because of the vision that he'll yeah. spin on it, like yeah. he is going to make that pink elephant come oh, yeah. to life somehow. I mean, it's going to be a mixture of you know I, CG I say, yeah. and and live action. Yeah. They're not going to get. They're going to teach a, a, an elephant how to talk. <laughs> but th- th- as far as hit go, I feel like he is just going to take it too far though, and it's going to lose me. Because like, I I can enjoy a trippy scene from time to time in mm-hmm. movies. Like that's fine, but I think it this movie for him. I think it's just going to be way too overboard. Um, whereas, like we just we both saw Cinderella, um, Cinderella where Kenneth Branagh, uh, his actual you know vision of the story was really good. He actually <laughs> yeah. kind of condensed it a little bit, yeah. um, because you know there was no music, the, you know the mice didn't really talk yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But his vision of that movie was really really well done. It was spot where, on, and I just feel like. You have Tim Burton. He's just going to let his mind's going to explode with this movie because it's already twisted. Now he gets to put his stamp on it and make it super twisted. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, I haven't seen Alice with Wonderland. If I watch that, I probably will watch it soon. You should watch it. Um, yeah. Because that would give me a better idea because that movie's kind of twisted too. Matt Hatter's so, great in that. Yeah. So is that, that was, did Johnny Depp play that? Johnny Depp yeah. played him. Yeah. It was, it was great. Johnny Depp going to play Dumbo? <laughs> he will be in the movie somewhere. He might play uh, Jiminy Cricket, right? Jiminy. It could be oh, Jiminy Cricket. No. <laughs> No, no, keep him out. Keep him out of the movie. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be tough, though. I mean, I mean, like you said, we just saw Cinderella. Cinderella. I mean, I think it was spot on. Um, it, it didn't lose anything from the mice not talking mm-hmm. and the transformation from the pumpkin to the the carriage and all that. That was did, amazing. It, it was, was amazing. Yeah, and um, but this one's gonna be a lot tougher because you got animals that talk the whole movie, mm-hmm. and um. It's gonna, gonna be really, really have to do some CG. Like the the CG is gonna have to be done really well. Yeah, it's. I, it's I hope be it's tough. I just I don't know. I, I, Tim Burton. I just feel like sometimes his like weird mind on how he films things because he has there is it's like the Tim Burton way of filming. Oh like, yeah, yeah, there's nobody so else like weird. Him. Yeah, and it, I think they need him for works, this one. Though. Sometimes it doesn't. It's I think I think I think they need him for this one. I think it could go well. Yeah. I just have a feeling this is going to be another one of those that missed for me. So the next topic here is speaking of Disney movies, who are some of your favorite animated villains of all time and why? You want to just go back and forth here? Or yeah, we can go back and forth. Go like maybe fine. one or two here? Yeah, uh, maybe just, two or three, whatever. It's not go, really go, my, go with three and we'll go back and forth. It's not going to be my top three, but these are three that I thought just on the top of my head. Mm-hmm. I actually had to look up his name because I haven't seen the movie in a long time, mm-hmm. but Sid Phillips from uh, Toy Story. Uh, oh yeah! I mean, he blew up all those toys all the time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was just a vicious kid, man. Like, technically, that's Pixar. Yeah, I technically, mean, it's I, Pixar, but that's fine. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, so Sid. Yeah, he he took all the bodies and mixed yeah. them all together. And it's creepy. He was a, yeah, he was a really creepy kid, man. Mm-hmm. Like, and you know, I was kind of young when I watched that movie, and it kind of freaked me out a little bit, man. But. Yeah, I'll put him as my number three right now. My number three villain is going to be Jafar from Aladdin. All right. That guy was so menacing and so cool. I mean, he's a magician. I mean, the guy can create stuff with magic. I mean, that is so cool to begin with. And then on top of that, he's an evil magician because he he is so evil and awesome. I I just, I can't. And like, of course, the parrot. I mean, what's the parrot's name? Yago. Yago. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That was Gilbert Godfrey. Peanut oh, calorie, by so the way. Good. The whole movie is just 
it's a fantastic movie. It's one of my. It's probably my. It's definitely in my top three favorite uh, Disney movies yeah. of all time. That you don't have a great movie without a great villain. Villain, yeah. So, uh, Jafar definitely right. number three for me. My number two is going to be Cruella Deville. Cruella. Uh, yeah, she. I mean, she takes all those dogs and makes coats mm-hmm. out of them and stuff. Mm-hmm. And she's just a very evil person. I mean, she's just creepy too. Yeah, I mean, just creepy. All right, all right. So number three for. I mean, number two for me is one of the most famous. Of all time. Hopefully and that's don't take Captain that Hook all right, okay. all right. from Peter Pan. Captain Hook. I mean, he's been in Hook. He's obviously been in Peter Pan forever. All these stories. Um, the animated version. And he has had many different styles of evil. Yep. Uh, but he is just wants Peter Pan to die. Like so bad. Yeah. He wants yeah. to take him out so bad and can never succeed. Yeah. I just, I, I love his efforts. And it's another one. Like Peter Pan is so successful with Disney yeah. and everything like that. And he has done such a, he's been such an integral part of that. I mean, who doesn't know who Captain Hook is? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's amazing. I love him. All right. My number one, and it is my number one, is Scar from Lion King. That is probably most people's. Yeah. and it's, That might be my brother's number he's, one. He's, um... He k- kills his own brother. He, uh, one of the most, I think, one of the most gruesome deaths by him too. At the end, I mean, he got eaten by his own people. I mean, <laughs> it was. I mean, he's just an evil person. He sends a little one out there, and uh, he's a uh, he's definitely by himself. He's and, de- and that's one of Disney's most profitable yeah. animated movies. I of think all it time. is. Isn't it the most profitable? I, was it? I think I didn't didn't what you call it. Um, Frozen didn't that beat it out? Oh, I don't know. I, I thought tell it did. Maybe not. Yeah. Um, anyway, so my my next one is my favorite one of all time because it is my favorite animated movie by Disney, and that is Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Mermaid. That is, I just she is just so evil looking, and she you know she's like the, the the squid or whatever the heck she is, and just she's so evil her songs are so like evil and just everything about her just she is by far for me and probably definitely not one of the most well known no yeah I mean but she is just by far my favorite I I love that movie though I love it so much All right, so we will move on to the next topic and that is a buddy of ours Jason Palermo wrote in a question that I think we should talk about Yep. and he said um, little should little kids be allowed to see R rated movies even if they are with parents like not 14 year olds, but like children, the ages like two to seven kind of deal. Should they, should the theaters not allow them in? That is a tough, tough question. It's because, a tough topic. Because uh, the theaters, I mean, I don't know if they can deny it. I, I'm, I don't know what the rulings are behind it. And the, I mean, the they're regi- their own business. They can let in pretty much whoever they want. They, yeah. Really. I mean, I don't know. Want, if, I can they refuse anybody they want? I, I mean, think so. I mean. They're just not going to be, like, the parents aren't going to come back on them and say it's like. I'm sure they screwed. would get a lawsuit put on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no that. doubt. Like, but. I mean, as far as the, the theater itself goes, I don't I don't think they can do anything about it as long as. But should, if, if they, if they no, had the ability. Should if they, they had the ability, no? yes, they should say no. Uh, these are adult movies. The pe- people that are going to these movies want to see the movie, and they don't want to be interrupted by a little for, kid. For me, for me, I want I want to say that I think that this the the movie theaters should have no say whatsoever. I think that even if they had the ability, they shouldn't be allowed to say no. That kid can't come in. I don't want the kid in there, and as a parent, I wouldn't want my kids to go. Yeah. Um, I think this is and, more of a parent thing. And, and that's what it is. I think that this is the parents should have the responsibility of keeping those kids out. But I just never. I, I mean, it's tough. It's like, you know, every, everybody parents differently. Every other person, you know, it's it all depends. But it is what it is for me. Yeah. That leads us right to the next question yep. by Bill Pia, who asked us to talk about the worst type of moviegoers. So those people that can ruin your movie experience. Let's just rattle off a few here. We got one. We got one recently, man. It's uh, we went to go see the Whiplash. We talked. A, <laughs> we we talked a little bit about this. Uh, I think uh, maybe the last show of the show before. And Doctor uh, Yonenstein. <laughs> uh, Sir moans a lot, man. Like this guy, he didn't ruin my experience, <laughs> but it kind of took it away a little bit just just for the fact that me and me and Shane were me and Shane were into the movie. Like we were on the edge of our seats. Like what is gonna happen oh next? God, yeah. And uh. You know, you look in front of you, and you got this guy going, 
<laughs> and making the noises with it too. It's not like he's doing it silently. And there was usually and there was people like are 10, like, yeah, like they yawn and, and go. There was like ten people in the theater. I mean, come on, have a little bit of respect for somebody you know, like behind you. I mean, he, he was literally right in front of us. He's I mean, tie tie. <laughs> tie tie. <laughs> Go to the theater to go to sleep. Yeah, it's just so uh, that that drives me crazy. That's yeah. one for me. Maybe one, one for you. You. One of the ones that drive me crazy is the person, obviously, the other one, the texty guy, uh, who brings up their phone every five seconds and texting with a light beaming up on yeah. it. There was a movie we went to go see uh, a personal favorite, Days of Future Past. Love that movie to death. Like that movie is awesome. But this guy almost ruined me. He was literally going like this every five seconds. He's like texting his phone, putting this up to his ear. Texting his phone, putting up to his ear. It's like it's like he was on a phone call yep. and he was like on a waiting service where he had to hit like the number yeah. one oh for this thing, yeah, number yeah. five for this thing. And yeah. he was doing it for like five minutes. I asked the guy twice to stop it. Somebody else asked the guy, and then one other guy was like, "Dude, shut okay. your phone off!" Like, like pay your bills what? later. Like, why would you pay seventeen fifty to go see an IMAX movie? Yeah. And then go and be on the phone the whole time. If you have, just leave. You're not yeah. obviously watching the movie. Like, go do something else. Yeah. Oh, so that drives me crazy. Yeah. Do you have like a? Obviously, you said you you have said something to somebody before, but without yes. phones, right? Yeah. I I have a little like little method from. I've I've actually said something to somebody too, but um, I have a little method for myself. I I picture myself going up to the person two times. Mm -hmm. And on that third time, I actually go up oh, to the person and say, time. "I mean, you take out your phone once; it's all right. You got, I, see, you got something important, whatever." If actually, like goes and like looks at their time. See, like, I don't like, even like a, that. If they got a they got a little te they got a text message or something, everybody has family and things might be important. So you look at it real quick. That's fine. Yeah. Don't sit there, sit and, there and like talk and text back. Text back. If you want to go? Yeah. Go leave. Yeah, you know, exactly. That's, it. That's well, that's the thing. If you get a text and you you look at your text real quick, put it back in your pocket and leave. Yeah. You know, it's pretty simple. I mean. So what's what's another one? What's another knowing? We, uh, another uh, I'm gonna actually bring up something else that we brought up a couple of episodes ago too. It's people that are quoting the movies during the movie. <laughs> it's, it goes along the line along the same lines as people talking during a movie. I right. mean, there is nothing more annoying to me. It bothers me more than a cell phone is somebody talking, and people that go to the movies with me know better than to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Like I'll just flat up tell them to shut the fuck up. Like. <laughs> Like I don't care. Like just don't talk, man. Like, you got you could talk during the. I don't. I don't even care if you talk during the trailers. Like right. if you want, if you need to talk, talk during the trailers. Whatever, that's fine with me. It's still ruining me because I like trailers. Right. But during the movie, just don't talk up. at You're, all. You spend like, your hard earned money. Yeah. Time like, to watch some movies. But you. But the thing I look at too, he's not bothering just me. He's bothering everybody. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. it no could matter be a how girl quiet too. you whisper. I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, no matter how quiet you are. You, Everybody hears you in that theater. And then if if I want to go on to another one, I would say another one that's annoying to me is when people fall asleep in the theater. Oh. Like, and I don't mind. Go ahead. You want to spend your money and fall asleep in the theater? That's fine. Know if you're a snorer or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you start snoring in the theater, that is going to make me mad. Yep. That is going to tick me off. Like that is to the point of where you go and kick the back of their chair or something like that. Yep. Do not go to the theater and and snore. You want to sleep? Fine. Spend your 15, 10 to $20 on your movie ticket and your popcorn and all that stuff. You want to go to bed? Fine. Whatever. The movie's not for you. I don't care. Just do not snore. Yep. Put on those nose breathing strips or whatever the hell you need to do. That's fine. Don't snore. All Don't right. snore. All right. Well, do you have anything else? I got one more. All right. And that's the person that likes to sit in the middle of the aisle and decides they're going to get up about 15 times during the movie <laughs> and make everybody move every single time. It's bad enough when you go to a sporting event yeah. and you got that drunk that gets to get up every inning or uh -huh. every five minutes of a football game to go yeah. get another drink. Yeah. But when you're in a movie... You're making everybody move out of their seats. I mean, it's better in Waterford now because yeah. they got the big yeah, lazy room, boys, and you know room. it doesn't bother anybody. They you know, they walk in front of you for a second. You go to an IMAX, but when you when different. you go to the IMAX theater or you go to like an older theater or whatever, everybody's got to move. Like it's not one person moving. Everybody's got to move for this one guy. Yeah, and it's not the one time. That one time is all right. And, you know, it's back and forth, five six times. You don't have that small of a bladder, man. <laughs> Sorry, all right? You know, the the bag of popcorn can wait. The refill can wait. You know, that's what I say. You know, watch another movie or something and get the refill of popcorn. So, Or, or you know, get that, uh, you know, what what is the, the, the urine pill where you can, uh, you know, you have a small... They should just have a dispenser in the, the movie theater. <laughs> like 25 cents. <laughs> just, 
pills. Urination pills. I don't know what they're called. I don't uh, even. And you know, it's like you know, you have a large prostate or something Stop like that. Stop pee or something. I don't know what it's called, but. <laughs> well, the last one for me, and this actually hits. Home. I've actually never said anything to this guy about it, um, but there's a particular person that I go see the movies with every once in a while. It's not you. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's not my brother. Don't worry about it. Oh, he's calling <laughs> one of you guys out right now. <laughs> The, the guy who we go to is a person that me and my brother go with quite often. And that is, he is a, a loud breather. Oh, okay. So he's got that <sighs> from time to time. Yep. I don't want to be sitting next to Darth Vader during a movie. <laughs> like I don't, I'm not there to do that. And it drives me a little, it doesn't happen all the time. Yep. I don't know what it is. If it's certainly he's breathing or whatever, but every once in a while he starts breathing and it's just like, now, I'm going to have to talk to him about it next time. Well, you're going to have to now. Yeah, I'm going to have to. I haven't <laughs> mentioned his name. He doesn't, you know, I've, I've gone with different movies with a lot of different people. But, yeah, there's a there's a guy that I go if with. If you're watching and, this and your next birthday <laughs> gift is Breathe Right Strips, you're the one he's talking he's about right now. Dude. <laughs> It's like he's like scuba diving, you know. It's like I don't, I don't need to hear that. Like, it just I'm like bugs me. It drives me crazy. It's just that like little background noise. It's like, oh, stop it. That's why it doesn't bother me in the IMAX movie. That's fine because it's so loud there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yep. That's fine. Yeah. But in a normal theater, oh yeah. my lord, oh, Darth <laughs> Vader breathing. I know. I used to do something that used to drive my brother nuts. <laughs> And that was bite my fingernails. Oh. He always used to say, I can hear you biting your fingernails. I want to like punch you. <laughs> Gets in the popcorn and everything. Oh, come on. I, I like, no, no, it's just, I, you can actually hear me. Cause I like, I'll sit there and I'll like that. It's I'll, just, and, and like, I'll, I'll try and like, and I, and in a lot of movies when there's suspense and thriller or anything like that, I am constant. Like I just, I am a nail biter anyway. That makes me like, I like, I'm like walk out. I'm like this, like no fingers. Like, cause I keep chewing. So now, thankfully, after being told by him, because he he held that in for so many years that that was annoying, and after all that time, now when I'm there, I have idea, I'm like, like, oh, oh, like oh, oh, unless I'm in the theater by myself, like no fingernail biting whatsoever. <laughs> That goes along the line of what I, I just brought up something for me too is uh, people that uh, I hate it when uh, people are slurping on their drinks and all of a sudden they open up that cover. Oh, you know what they're ice? doing. You know what they're going for is that ice, <laughs> and all they do is chomp away on that ice. <laughs> like, oh, come on. <laughs> oh, so and it, well, we'll go on to the the next segment. Mm-hmm. The next segment of this show is in or out, and in or out is where we quickly talk about the topic, and then we just say if we're in or out. So the first segment is, I mean, the first topic is Miles Teller, the star of movies like Whiplash, An Awkward Moment, and the rebooted franchise uh, series that's going to be coming out soon, is in a movie called The Stopwatch Gang. He's going to be in a movie, and he's also going to be producing it. Um, and they're called The Stopwatch Gang because of how quickly they pulled off their heists. They also never once fired a gun, but they were still one of the most feared like gangs mm-hmm. like, during that time frame um, in the 1980s. Has the feel of real cops and robber uh, flicks like The Town. Point Break and the Heat. Are you in or out on this news with Miles Teller? Are you in for the Stopwatch Gang? I'm in. Um, I think it's a great story. I mean, I vaguely remember hearing about it. Um, they're from. I think they did uh, Canadian robberies and American robberies. Uh, it was like a hundred of them. Or yeah, something. they did like a hundred. And like you said, they never shot a gun once, but they were they were feared. Um, I think it would be interesting. I mean, it does have like a like a a heat kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, it has that vibe to it, and I, I like that movie. And I love the town. The Heat has one of the best. I, I love gun, the town. Gunfights all, all time. I like all those heisty kind of movies. Mm. I mean, there's not too many that I wouldn't watch. Yeah. But uh, no, I I'm a huge heisty fan. Yeah, like huge. Love them. I I mean, there is rarely a heist film that I do not like, and this sounds like an amazing idea for a movie. I mean, like, how do you create that fear? Without yeah. actually ever firing a gun, I mean, yeah. you're obviously if you're you have a hundred bank robbers, uh, bank robberies. How I mean, obviously they must have guns and stuff like that. Yeah. Why would they even bring that up? Yeah. But how do you how do you create the uh, you know that 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 aura of fear around you without ever actually causing any real yeah. serious pain with firing guns and stuff? I am so hopefully intrigued by this. And Miles Teller is is turning into a very good eye yeah. actor. I mean, everything that I've seen him in has been good. Yep. Um, and then even, because I mean, even that awkward moment wasn't a great movie, but he yeah. was good in it. He yeah, was he really was good, good in it, yeah. Um, and Whiplash, he was amazing yeah, in he it. He was amazing in so, that, So, yeah. um, I, I, I am all in. I am 
absolutely all in on this movie. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I can't. It sounds yeah. like such a such a fun topic. I'm, I'm definitely gonna be following it through the the whole production. I mean, I, I think mm-hmm. it's gonna be one of those movies that I'm gonna really enjoy. Yeah, and like you said, Miles Teller is already on board. So, yeah. and he's everything he's been coming out with has been gold. Yeah, I, I, I it, I this whole thing just seems so intriguing. Like mm-hmm. the whole stopwatch gang, I just love it. Yeah. All right, so the next one we have is taking you down another heist kind of film road. Um, it's the Tracer trailer. Uh, the Tracer trailer just happened. Are you in or out on this movie? Are you in or out? I'm going back on my word right now that <laughs> I love heisty movies. <laughs> I do not love this trailer at all. Oh. I actually, to be honest with you, I only watched half of it. Um, it was that bad. Like, It did get a little better. The trailer got a little better in the second half. I don't want to watch the second half. Like That first half was that bad. Like Parkour, come on. Parkour, like he's like, and, and, yeah, uh, that's like the the whole background of like the that's trailer. That's what the whole movie's the, the about. Parkour so and bad. and and robbing, like that's what they do. And of course, it you know it takes a turn in the end. You know what all? I, I mean, but, I knew eventually it was gonna come out. I mean, it, par, parkour or it's parkour or par, I don't, parkour. I don't parkour, know. Yeah. yeah parkour. Um, it's huge right now. I mean, a lot of people are doing it. I, I only like it because I like watching the blooper videos of people smacking their heads all over the place. I mean, if this was a comedy, I would probably watch it because there might be some good head smacks and, you know. It, well, I think there's going to be some good head smacks. It's like Taylor Lautner's character is like a, a getting, rookie. Like like a rookie tr- yeah. yeah, he's not. He has never done it before and he's learning how to do it. So maybe you will get a couple of those head smacks. Maybe You'll, get, I, you, I, you'll I, have yeah. to let me know. No. <laughs> I, I have no interest to in seeing this. However, I am totally out on it. I don't really care for Taylor Lautner. Although I did find him a little funny in Grown Ups too. Um, yeah. It was pretty funny. I mean, I have never really enjoyed him. I haven't seen the you know whatever the um, the movies the Twilight series. I haven't seen Not any either, of those. Yeah. Um, but I, every time I see this character, it just looks like he has like two huge caterpillars on his forehead, and like it, his like his face is always all scrunched up. I don't know. It's just his face, and everybody thinks he's such a pretty boy, and I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand <laughs> what the allure is to Taylor Lautner. But this movie, I, I have no interest in seeing whatsoever. I mean, I am with you. I'm with you a little bit on the whole parkour like thing, like. It's kind of entertaining. I actually, when I watch those videos, I know something bad's gonna yeah. happen. So I'm kind of like, oh, I don't want to see it. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I can't. I don't want to see it. But like in this, I just don't see how it's gonna be good. I mean, I uh-huh. he's the good guy, but and like he's gonna try and get the girl out. Like that's right. the trailer. But I don't know. I, it, I'm not in. into it. I'm I am not, not in. into that one at all. Which is weird because I'd say nine out of ten heist films, I'm in. Yeah. This one is that rare. It's exception. a different kind of heist movie, though. It's it, like yeah, but it's still a heist movie. It is a heist it's movie. A bank robber movie. It's I mean, just... trying to heist some heist yeah. some money. Um, all right. So the next trailer that we saw was uh, the movie Before I Wake, which is starring Kate Bosworth, and it came out a couple of days ago. So what did you think about the trailer? And are you interested in seeing it? The trailer was awesome. I thought um, it was scary. Um, it looks like it's gonna be a pretty decent movie. It almost had to me. It had like a Freddy Krueger kind of feel to it, like uh, the whole... Yes. You know, I, I didn't really catch enough of the movie from the trailer to really get exactly what's going on, but I think they gave you enough to know, like, it's it's going to be a good movie. I mean, it's just... it's It was it was, it was was a really done, really well done uh, trailer. I know you don't like jump scares and stuff, so I'm a little... Well, with me, I mean, I think... As far as this movie goes, I agree with you 100%. Freddy Krueger, that's the first thing that kind of entered my mind. And Freddy Krueger, The Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one, is one of my favorite horror films yeah. of all time. Oh, yeah. Um, this movie kind of reminded me of that. But, the, you know, the thing with horror movies, one of the scariest things in, in like in horror movies is like clowns. Yeah. Like that is it. One of the other ones that actually I think is more scary for me is creepy ass kids. kids. Yeah. Creepy ass kids in this mm-hmm. movie. And this kid was so freaking creepy because he was all happy and yeah. like then towards the end things went awry yeah. and oh my lord holy cow yeah. i was like when i finished that trailer i was like yeah. fuck you like i was so upset because i was just like i couldn't believe this i'm like i'm like no because now i have to go see this because i am in that it'll be good but i am out that i want to see it because i'm going to be terrified like that i just have a feeling the movie's going to freak me the hell out 
The only thing I'm kids, worried about is that PG-13 rating. Is it? I, I saw it at the end of the, the trailer. I don't know if they rated the trailer PG-13 mm. or if they're actually rating the movie PG-13. It was really creepy, though. It was creepy, but I, I, want, I want that rated R. Like You want, on you want a little horror. bit of blood in there? Yeah, I want that... I just I want that more scare factor yeah. in there. I mean, I don't know that that movie. Oh, that that we need that a good one after out. the last one that we that saw. That creeped me out. That's that what I'm saying. Me. Oh, the Lazarus event. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the last topic in this one in this segment is the Mike Tyson biopic is getting made, and with Jamie Fox playing the heavyweight. And recently in an interview, Jamie Fox said, "I just went in with Paramount with Mike Tyson, so I'm going to do the Mike Tyson story. Listen, to be in the same room pitching Mike Tyson about Paramount uh, to Paramount." Mike Tyson is on one side of me. I'm on the other side and doing Mike Tyson at the same time. And Martin Scorsese at the helm. This will be the first boxing movie that Martin Scorsese has done since Raging Bull. That was his quote. So are you in or out on these three things? Mike Tyson biopic, Jamie Foxx playing Tyson, and Martin Scorsese directing the biopic. I think I'm all in for all these. I mean, a Mike, Mike Tyson biopic would be great, I think. I mean, that guy led is leading it's still leading it's such an interesting life i mean <laughs> it's just it's, i wonder if they'll go into that i wonder if they're going to i wonder if they, won't, wonder if they just won't focus you, on like boxing and they'll actually move on to his later his pigeon you know training and all dude, that it's, mike, stuff. it's mike tyson man i think i think he's gonna let it out i mean he's not scared to say what he has to say i no. mean I, I think he's gonna put it out there and i mean it might not concentrate a lot on it but I think it's going to I think uh, the majority of that film is going to be his boxing career which it should be. I mean his boxing career is one, if not the greatest fighter of all time. I mean top 2. He, he's he's I mean, in the conversation yeah. with some of the greatest fighters of all time. Obviously he had some struggles in later in his career, yeah. but I am so in on this mm-hmm. like Tyson was the last boxer that I actually ever even slightly followed. Yeah, me too. Um his career was so interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, not just from like his one punch knockouts to and all that kind of stuff, the Mike Tyson punch out video game and all that stuff that was just so awesome. You know, he had so much scandal around him, you know, with um, I can't remember what the actress's name is, Robin Givens or whoever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he had, you know, a lot of scandal around there. There was a rape charge and all this kind of stuff with other things. Like he had so his life is like Biting fascinating ears. in a Biting weird way. Yeah. It's really fascinating in a really strange way. Yeah. And I really like Jamie Foxx as an actor oh, yeah. most of the time. Most I, of the time, I yeah. like him as an actor. And he does a great Tyson impression. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that obviously will get scaled back a little bit yeah. so it won't be as cartoonish. Yeah. But, you know, he, he in this role, I think this is going to be very good. He obviously has to get bulked up a little bit because Tyson's a beast. And as far as Martin Scorsese, I mean, I don't... There is never a movie that I wouldn't buy that yeah. he's directing. Yeah. Like, I am always in on a Scorsese film. And then on top of that being a Tyson you know, biopic. I'm all in, like on all three across the board. Triple trap vector. When I when I think about it, I can't think of any anybody else doing that role except for Jamie Foxx. I mean, looking down the line, I mean, who else are you gonna pick? I mean, it, um, Will Smith's already done Muhammad yeah. Ali, and he's um, yeah, he's not really that same. I mean, it's Tyson's shorter and he's short, more stocky, yeah. and I mean, you get. I mean, there's there's other people, there's other actors that I'm sure that you could go with as that, good that, as just, Jamie Foxx. Though, um, I mean, it all depends. I mean, there's a lot of good actors out there. I mean, it all depends on who. Jamie Foxx might drop the ball. I mean, we don't know. I mean, I've liked, he hasn't. I've liked most of his stuff. He so. hasn't. He hasn't hit every role of his out of the park. Like even in the last Amazing Spider-Man, I don't think he did that great of a job. Um, he, his character was very cartoonish, mm-hmm. and I he was one of the parts that always pulled me out of the film. Um, his character in that movie. But this isn't going to be that real. I mean, this is going to have the Scorsese feel yeah, to it. So yeah. I have a feeling this will be a much better, he'll do a much better job in this. Yeah. All right. So, so we're both all in on that. Yes, we are all in all of it. All right. um, the next one up is uh, 30 Second Thoughts, where we have 30 seconds to give our opinions on the topic. So Frozen 2 was announced by Disney Pictures last Thursday. We have, we have both seen um, Cinderella, and we saw the animated short that happened at the beginning of the movie. Based on the news of the short, I mean, based on the short and the news of the new Frozen movie coming out, um, do you think it can recapture the gold that it had with the original? Go. Um, I think it will. Um, like you said, we both saw the Cinderella and the the short film. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never seen Frozen. You haven't uh, seen but, it? No, I've never seen it. But the kids uh, that were in the movie theater that uh, during Cinderella, like they were into it big time. Like they were all dancing and. They had loved it. I mean, I think anything Frozen that comes out, they can make a Frozen 9, and I think it's still going to be, like, 
awesome. Yeah, you're all done? Yeah. That's it? Yeah. No, you, just think, you think they can capture it again? Yeah. <clears throat> For me, I don't think that Frozen 2 is going to capture it all again. I mean, I think The Lion King 2, I don't think that did it. I think all the other sequels, most of the sequels, except for Toy Story with the Pixar, I think they did a good job. Even Cars 2 and all that kind of stuff. They just didn't capture, recapture the gold. Um, and I don't think that they're going to be able to do it again with this either. I think that Frozen 2, that song pro- like propelled that movie into like into history. I mean, that was one of the most thing. It got so downloaded, everything like that. That is the main reason why that movie succeeded. And I don't, I don't see the allure with it to begin with. I, I just, I don't see it. I didn't yeah. see it. And I think that, I don't think it'll be able to capture it again. I think it'll do okay, but. All right, the next, next topic is Liam Neeson said he's going to quit action movies in two years. Do you think this is a good move? And do you think he'll be able to stick to his word? Go. I've never been a big Liam Neeson fan. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Taken, the first one. Um, I tried watching the second one. wasn't that good. I mean, all his action films are all the same, and it, they seem like they come out like every, what, two or three months probably. <laughs> um, but to be honest with you, where else is he going to go? Is he, is he going to go into the rom-com like business or I mean he's gonna go to the what's he gonna do I mean he should just stick to it until he retires from being an actor ever for me I'm gonna have to say that Liam Neeson doing this I think it's a good idea and he has proven that he can do dramatic roles he was in Schindler's List he was amazing Um, I think that he can do it but I have a feeling that this time around, it's going to be harder for him to escape that action because everybody has seen him in so much. And I think he's going to end up getting pulled back in. I think there's going to be a point in time where he's going to be, you know, one or two movies in. They aren't going to be having as much success. His pay rate's going to go down. Therefore, here comes the action with this guy. All right. The next thing we're going to talk about is we kind of exchange movies with each other every once in a while, um, every other week. And this week, unfortunately, because the movie that he selected for me the Babadook, I couldn't get on video on demand, Netflix, Vudu. I tried everywhere, even Redbox, everything, couldn't get it. Yeah. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch it. Um, he gave me another one, but it was last night at like midnight when he gave me the Adventureland. So I started watching it, but I just didn't have enough time. You had Roadhouse, though. Mm-hmm. I love the movie. I did watch that movie again. Let's talk about the movie Roadhouse. The Double Deuce. The Double Deuce. Dude, the Double Deuce. Um, I actually watched it twice. Um, it, I could see how you could see it as a guilty pleasure movie. <laughs> um, I watched it the first time by myself. And then the second time I watched it with my roommate. Had he seen it? And he had seen it like a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And um, it was so much better watching it with somebody else. Oh, my gosh. I, I mean, the movie is so fucking corny. Like, oh, it's so bad. It's it's It was one of the corniest movies I've ever seen in my life. But it had that great aspect to it. Like I love I love when he did rule number three. He's like, what was that? What was it? Oh, it's be nice. It, Always be nice. And I was thinking Cinderella the whole time. Like, was he would just would get done watching Cinderella or something? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah that's he, right. It was. It was. It was a. Eh. The, it's hard to say it was a good movie, it's but so, it was a good movie. I mean, so much pleasure about that movie. I mean, when he's doing the Tai Chi on the lawn, <laughs> shirtless, and like the guy pulls up in his quad. Hey, you know, it wasn't a quad; it was a three wheeler. Oh, by I'm the way, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was three wheeler. <laughs> but he pulls up and he's like sitting there smoking a cigar, and he's got this big fancy windbreaker on, just sitting there watching the, the guy like shaking his head. That dude. That dude wasn't the only time he was watching him with no shirt on either. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, he saw him on the on the deck. Who's watching his, him? Yeah, with his ex wife. Yeah, with his ex. Oh. <laughs> I was like, this guy is a creeper, man. Like, he's just not a bat. He's not a villain. He's a creeper. Like Remember when he's driving the, down the, when he's driving the car and he's driving. <laughs> I just kept looking at my room. I was like, what the hell is that guy doing? Like, <laughs> and of course, Patrick Swayze has to be coming. Yeah, the other way. yeah. He has no desire to move out of his way whatsoever. Uh, the, it, it was corny, man, but I, I did like it. I laughed my ass off the whole movie. I mean, <laughs> if anybody takes that movie serious, they got problems. Uh, it, was, it, it was not – I wouldn't even put it under, like, an action movie. Like, I no. would just put it as a comedy. Like, oh, it's so Straight funny. up comedy. Uh, it's so funny. I mean, the throat rip. The, oh, Come on. The throat <laughs> rip. Great. <laughs> loved it <laughs> like i said my my roommate hadn't watched it in a while and he's sitting there and he's like did he just rip his ab- adam's apple out <laughs> I, was like, 
I was like, this just turned into Mortal Kombat all the time. All of a sudden, like, finish him. I was just waiting for him to pick it up and go fatality. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it was so great. That should be a fatality. It was, in there, the it was, rip. It was so the the movie itself, like the storyline was so weird to me. Like I'm sitting there like when he when he when he did kill the guy, uh the fur the, the guy that he threw in the river or whatever, the his his girlfriend at the time or the girl that he was trying to get with, mm-hmm. she got mad at him. Yeah. <laughs> Like the dude, He's the, trying to kill you. Why the, did you kill the him? The dude just blew up the old man's house with the guy in it. And on top of that, he's doing all kinds of other crazy ass shit. This guy, Patrick Swayze, just saved saved this guy's life. Mm-hmm. You know he did it because he's laughing. He's like, this is this, 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 this is a ridiculous laugh. That was a like, that was a hell. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> like that. <laughs> that was a fantastic. I was like, I, that, I couldn't get past that whole like, why is she mad at him right now? Like. Mm-hmm. He's protecting you right now, like, uh-huh. and she was pissed. Oh, you want to see creepy? What about his buddy, his guy that who's supposed to be better than him? Um, I can't remember what the actor's name is. He was in Tombstone. Um, oh yeah, um, the, the the tall guy. I can't remember what his uh, name. Sam Elliott, right? Yes, 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 yes Sam yes. Elliott. Yeah. He, him in that movie when they are like they finally come, he's finally hanging out with them and hanging out with Patrick yeah. his girlfriend and everything that whole oh scene. my lord when they go to that they go they like leave the bar the and they're like oh let's go somewhere we get some food and all that kind of stuff and they go there and he's like alright I'm gonna take you on the dance floor yeah. he's like well, hey, why don't you leave your friend come on come on lady oh, you're so attractive he's like all hitting on it and Patrick says he's like sitting like one foot to yeah. his right and they're like all the bumping and grinding on the dance floor at the diner <laughs> like what the my, hell my favorite scene with Sam Elliott was uh, when Patrick Swayze was uh, all pissed off and he's doing his little punches on that little thing and oh, yeah. Sam Elliott came in and he goes to punch Sam and Elliott he catches and he it. catches it with his left yeah. hand just like this <laughs> I'm like nobody can do that in real life like, <laughs> and then on top of that the other scene which was ridiculous was when he first went into the hospital and he, he she's stapling oh, yeah. him and she's like oh you don't need any pain pain don't pain, hurt pain don't hurt and then he's hitting on her while he's she's stapling him like That's nobody right. does that like a big knife wound like he does Patrick Swayze man oh my god come on it was that ridiculous he like, handed her his medical records and everything it saves time <laughs> saves time man you gotta do all this just doing life or whatever yeah. he said he's like just a normal yeah, life right yeah. now he has like scars all over the place he's like you ever win a fight nobody ever wins a fight yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay these these quotes for these movies are quotable but they're like ridiculous like quotes yes. like like these quotes that you wouldn't re- use in if real life if you say this movie's bad I'm going to throat rip you <laughs> This movie is so uh, fantastic. And the, and the other thing, the, the, this bad guy is supposed to rule the the, the town, mm-hmm. but he has the the police in his back pocket. Mm-hmm. What about the state police? I mean, <laughs> the, this guy is running a Bigfoot truck mm-hmm. through Over. a car dealership, <laughs> right through it. Nobody's gonna say nothing. It's not gonna be a front page of the local news. Like he's got power. <laughs> he's bringing in a Sears or something like that. <laughs> JC Penney's. JC Penney's is in that town because of me. I'm bringing in a Caldor. <laughs> Jabla is here because of me. Bradley's baby. I'm bringing it in. But yeah, it, it was a, it was a ridiculous movie. Like I, I'm glad you gave it to me because I did enjoy it. Um, it's definitely a movie I'm putting it in my collection of movies that if I need a good laugh. I'm going to oh go back God. and watch it. Uh, it is so funny. I want to watch that again. So it is bad. It is definitely a movie you want to watch with somebody that uh, is going to... It is, it's one of those movies where I don't mind talking through it. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Because that, like, It's part of the charm. I don't want to be silent during <laughs> it's it. It's part because, of the charm during the movie. Because we just kept on looking at each other. We're like, <laughs> that really just happened? Like... <laughs> like oh, my God. Yeah. Like, it's, like it's, at the beginning when, you know, the his... One of his lackeys comes back to him because he didn't, you know, succeed in, you know, trying to get his um, nephew back his job or whatever. And the guy comes up to him. He's like, oh, I don't know what happened. And the guy was like, I'm sorry, boss. I'm sorry. He's like, you're sorry? He's like, no worry. No, no problem. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Boom. He slams him in the face. He's like, oh, no, I'm sorry. You know, no problem. No problem. Yeah, just come here. He's like, you don't have to worry about getting fired. Like, Boom. He slams him again. And the guy just like gets up. He's like, oh, like, what the hell's the matter with this guy? I didn't realize uh, Chum Lee from um Pawn Star was that old either because he was in the uh Patrick Swayze's little posse. Oh, really? It looked exactly like Chum Lee from oh uh Pawn God. Stars, the I, uh, the big, I don't, I don't the fat that, guy, yeah. the fat guy. Oh, really? That was one of the bouncers. <laughs> that the one he told I know him, which bouncer you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, he told him, guy. he's like, hey, if you kick him in the back of the leg, you can take down anybody yeah, or whatever, yeah. like that. And uh, yeah, it was uh, the best thing about the movie, the, the honest to good goodness about the movie was the music. 
I mean, he, oh, I yeah. know he's a real he's a real uh, musician in real life, a blind the musician. Guy, yeah. And uh, my my roommate actually put him, put me onto him, and uh, he's like, yeah, he, I actually own one of his albums, and uh, we were li- actually listening to his album and stuff. And uh, he's actually a really good musician. I mean, dude, that that <clears throat> was that movie is so over the top funny i love that movie it was just over the top oh, like, it's so awesome. it was more over about the, jumping the shark it was I mean, more over the top than over the top <laughs> no no <laughs> no it's not that movie is just as over the top it's it's, it's on the same line as over the top <laughs> i'm gonna give you the give the, 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 the grip <laughs> that might be a good movie to watch together by the way i own that movie too <laughs> over the, you do yes. oh my gosh it's one of the few slice slice little movies i don't own <laughs> oh my god that kid is so annoying cries like every five seconds oh, like let yeah. him run away yeah. <laughs> like come on so i bad. remember my brother crying during that movie <laughs> <laughs> broke out of jail or whatever the, i can't remember the movie that well but i remember when uh sylvester stallone was breaking out of jail or whatever mm-hmm. and ran the truck through the, the gate and everything mm-hmm. and look door my brother's crying what the hell <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna hate me for this, by the way. I don't know if he was really crying or not, but we just we make we make fun of him all the time because he always jokes uh, that he was crying in that movie. But, that's uh, hilarious. Yeah, it was. Um, if I had to rate this movie, with oh, my, you have to my with my Chadwick's <laughs> official rating. It, it's I gave him a seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. Seven right. out of ten. Yeah. As far as guilty movie pleasure go, I mean, you can't get much better than this. I I, I give it an eight out of ten. Yeah, like I love this movie. It. Cracks me up because of how bad it is. It's, it jumped. It, it jumped my guilty pleasure movies. It definitely did. It like it hurtled right I'm into. I'm so there. glad that you like that. Yeah, I was, like, it hurtled nervous. right into that. I was nervous. I was yeah. nervous that you weren't gonna like it. I'm so glad you did because I, I I watched that movie a long long time ago. Didn't revisit again until probably like I don't know maybe like six months ago. Yeah. And when I revisited it, I was I fell in love with the movie over again. I've seen it like four times since. Uh, it's so funny. Just I'm everything go, about it. Is, is it on Blu-ray? You know? Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Buy, I'm, I'm going to purchase it on Blu-ray. Yeah. I'm sure. Wrapping all that up, hmm. we're going to let you, let him talk because I didn't get the chance to watch the movie this week. He is, uh, he, uh, Chad has seen a movie recently um, called 71. It's a, it's a war film. It's kind of like a survival kind of movie. Oh, yeah. He saw it. He went to New York. And uh, he really liked it a lot. Yeah. And his creeped his way up to one of the best war films of yeah. all time for him. So I, I just want to let you uh, talk about that for a few seconds. Um, my whole, the whole point of going to New York was to go see Doug Love's movies, a uh, podcast that I listened to, my favorite podcast. He was in New York. I always go. I'm actually taking Shane in a couple weeks here. Um, but be, it was at 420, so we decided to go a little bit early to the see a movie. I got a couple of bucket list movie theaters that I do want to check out in New York. Um, and this is one on the list of movie theaters that I want to go to in New York. And it's called the Angelica Theater. And uh, it's actually one of the few underground theaters that are left. Um, it's underground. It's right next to the subway station. Mm-hmm. So uh, you get the rumbles mm-hmm. from the subway. You get the noises from the subway. Um, it's underground. It's just it's a cool experience. Um so we went there. 71 just opened up that weekend. I heard a lot of good things about it. Um, so we decided to go to that uh, 11 o'clock in the morning show. And I can't say too much, too many not not good things about this movie. Like, I mean, you went, you went all double negative on that. Yeah, not 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 good. <laughs> not, not, not 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 good. <laughs> not not wait, wait, not not, yeah. not more. Um, but this movie, it it definitely jumped. It. It's now my second favorite war movie. Um, and your first is it's Saving Private Ryan. Right. Still, yeah. Um, I, you can't get too much better than that. Uh, but this the star of this movie was Jack O'Connell. Um, I don't know too much about him. Um, guess he's been around for a little while as like a younger kind of punk kid or whatever. That's mm-hmm. the kind of roles he usually plays. But he he was a British soldier, a shoulder, shoulder, S- soldier, sold. <laughs> Chadwick ism. He's a British shoulder. <laughs> You can edit He's got that some out. Serious British shoulders. <laughs> you can edit that out, right? <laughs> anyway, he get, he gets he gets left behind by his platoon and uh, on accident um, in uh, in Belfast. And uh, Belfast was like pretty much where uh, the riots were going on, and it, it's a very hellish place. And um, he couldn't. He had to pretty much survive the night. I mean, the whole movie's about him surviving the night, and um, he can't really decipher who's good and who's bad. I mean, because everybody, because it's it's a split town. Yeah. And um, I mean, I don't want to give a lot away about the movie, but uh, I mean, the movie was just 
it was awesome. It was really gritty. Um, really true to life. Like, it was no, like, Hollywood, like, uh, shoot them up scenes in it. Like, he didn't go out there and kill five people at one time. Just a lot of suspense. Just a lot of suspense. It was psychological. Um, it was, it was just a really good movie, man. And, uh, I wish, I'm going to go see it again in a better theater. Not to knock that theater, but it is an older theater. The sound system wasn't that great. Yeah, you mentioned that. Their thick Irish, uh, Scottish accents that they had. Mm -hmm. um, Very hard to understand uh, from the muffling from the the sound. Mm -hmm. Um, But you got enough out of it to realize what was going on. There wasn't much dialogue in it anyway. Um, But... I highly suggest everybody to see this movie. Yeah, definitely go check it's out the trailer. It's in Connecticut now. Yeah, the tra- I mean, I've seen the trailer, and the trailer looked interesting, but not as interesting as for, you know, the rave review I mean, that I, you gave it. Me and me and my, like, me and my, going back to my roommate, we both went and saw it. He went with me, and uh, we pretty much were silent walking out of that movie. Like, I mean, a lot of people said that about American Sniper. Like, mm-hmm. it was very quiet after. Well, the ending for that was very, I, I, very I didn't. Somber. I didn't get to see the movie, right. so... Uh, that's but why everybody left that theater. It was a lot of older, a lot of older people were in this movie. I was, which surprised me. Um, but everybody was quiet. Nobody was talking afterwards. Here, we all went up the escalator together. Just kind of, we waited until we got outside, and we're like, man, that was a fucking Deep. awesome movie. Like yeah. it was, it was just a good movie, man. It was. Uh, I highly. It was. It's a. Uh, the director. He's a. Uh, He's a French director. Very first film he's ever directed. Hmm. Uh, I guess he did a couple of TV series that were well, he really. He'll probably be getting me. More, he'll probably be getting more offers now. Yeah, yeah that's uh, for sure. it's it was really good, and I was on the edge of my seat the whole time, like, you know, wondering what was gonna happen. I mean, yeah. all those movies, you know what's gonna happen. I mean, it was just like that good of a movie where you like on the edge of the seat. I love those movies where you're just so into that movie that. You just walk out of there. It's just I. Hate you already it. said it's in Hartford now, right? Yeah, it's in mm-hmm. Hartford. And two theaters in Hartford now, mm-hmm. and then it's in New Haven. I'm sure it'll hit like Madison and y- Madison. I, I think Waterford's going to pick it up. I think Buckland Hills is going to definitely gonna, pick yeah, it up. I mean, yeah. yeah, I guess it might. It, it, I think Buckland Hills will definitely pick it up because they pick up a lot of those big ind- independent films that are rolling. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, the only thing that sucks is it came out so early in the year. I just, I mean, it's going to be very hard for it to get. Oscar nods, like I mean, Grand Budapest it can, did. It can happen. Yeah, yeah I mean, a Lego but, movie should have, but yeah, you know, I don't think because it was released in February was the reason why it didn't get nominated. Yeah. I think it was just for whatever reason, they, whatever reasoning Academy felt that didn't deserve it. I, I don't know, but I, I think that you know, there's plenty of movies that are nominated that are early. It, it's gonna hurt it for winning. Yeah, that'll be the hard part. I don't but. see. I don't see it winning. I mean, I, I know there's a lot of good movies coming out this year. And, I mean, last year we had a gr- lot of great movies come out last year, and it's gonna be it's gonna be in my top. I already predicted it's gonna be in my top five of this year already. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, go out and see it. I mean, I want to actually go with you at some point. I mean, yeah, I'm interested in seeing. It. I definitely yeah. want to go see it. So that'll be cool. I yeah. can, uh, I, I, you know, because I love war movies, and Saving Private Ryan is probably my favorite mm-hmm. um, war, per, like just especially real t- wars that kind it of happen, yeah. like that, like the, in being. I don't know. What, it, that is definitely one of my favorite. I love that movie so much. I remember being in that movie. It was packed when I was in the theater. I saw it in Waterford, of all places. Um, this is when the the place still smelled like a cat box, and uh, you know the the seats were all uncomfortable. Yep. And um, but that movie, I remember being in the theater and having some older people leaving crying yeah. during the opening oh, yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it seemed so real and mm-hmm. brought them back. Like. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing that, and it's just that that's one of those movies that you leave the movie theater and you're just like, holy crap. Yeah. It's just such an intense movie. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's that's that. So, on that somber note, with yeah. the Br- British soldiers, <laughs> shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to wrap this thing up. and So that's it for today on this episode of Cine Talk. Uh, we have Mr. Chadwick Davis over here. Where can people find you on the interwebs? Um, you can find me on Twitter, DJ Dizzle 82 uh, Now that he's using it? Now that I'm actually using it yeah. and uh, finding out I actually can get famous people to answer me back. <laughs> um, and I'm on Instagram at DJ Dizzle 82 same thing. Um, I'm on Facebook, same thing. Um, check me out. But I do some stuff on the Cinder Bros page on Facebook. I'm the, the head of the fi- indif- independent film mm. categories. Don't worry, I'll edit that one out. Just edit that one out, too. <laughs> We're just going to edit this whole thing out. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you can catch me there on uh, those spots. Well, for me, you can catch me on anything, all the Cinebros. I am facebook.com slash Cinebros, 
Twitter, the Cinebros. I am Instagram, the Cinebros. Before I end, uh, before I end this, we are going to be giving away some prizes and giveaways soon. Mm-hmm. Um, Chad and I have been talking about it. We're going to be giving away stuff very soon, but you have to be a subscriber to get first dibs yeah. on the winning because anybody that subscribes will be alerted first time about the show and we won't be posting it on Facebook or anything like that until, you know, at some quite some time afterwards. So if you want a chance to win whatever giveaways, these are going to be movie tickets. They could be, you know, like a Fandango gift card or S- swag bags, some swag, stuff. maybe a DVD. Maybe or a some, Cinebro yeah. shirt. Yeah, well, we're going to have Cinebro shirts. Yeah, what's, we're going not, on? what's do it, man? Oh, <sighs> pre-shrunk, I hope. Because, uh, these, the dryer isn't friendly to me nowadays. <laughs> it's like uh, it's making things a little tighter than they should be. I wish shirts with just our face on it. Like, oh, how many people would wear those? You think? Oh, show off your shirt, by the way. That's an amazing Deadpool shirt. That's a I like Deadpool. that a lot. Deadpool, yeah. Over the microphone. Let's get it over the mic. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that that's it for us, uh, Cine Talk. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. I uh, am so glad that we had uh, someone here to do the cameras. It yes. was able Big to shout out. not be over here doing this yeah. all the time. Although, uh, so hopefully uh, that works out pretty good. We will be having a guest next week, too. Oh, is that next uh, week already? N- next show, yep. Who, what's your name? Sarah. 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 I wrote it out too, and I can't remember. <laughs> She's gonna be so bad. <laughs> you know, I gotta keep that in now too. Yeah, I know. Uh, how, uh, what do you think? How do you think it's pronounced? It was. It was French, so it was like. Uh, I gotta hold on. Let me look at my phone real quick. We actually got a couple of guests lined up for the next <laughs> next couple of shows. By the way, uh, I'm trying to trying to get a couple of my buddies on, and uh, it's gonna be uh, I think I think it's Tatro, Tatro, Tatro. Yes, okay. it's very French, so it's like all weird letters all over the place, and you would think you would think four years of French one, I would eventually learn French something. <laughs> <laughs> eventually learn something in French. <laughs> French 101. French 101. French 101. French 101. You yeah. obviously did not uh, do well in that class after <laughs> taking it over and over again. So ma- I, maybe if you stayed long enough to get to the letter T, they would have taught you Tetro. I always thought a D minus was passing, but apparently you need a C minus to pass and get onto French 2. Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't get there. I mean. <laughs> Uh, well, anyway, that's it for this episode of Set of Talk. Uh, I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Please share all that kind of stuff, and most importantly, subscribe. So we will see you guys again soon. Yes.